good morning uh, everybody so in the previous uh, lectures the first lecture we have taken up uh, what is gradually varied flow and then we have taken up the general equation for gradually varied flow in the second lecture we have taken up uh, gradually varied flow equation applicable to wide rectangular channel and then continued the lecture with uh, how to classify the channel bottom slopes the channel bottom slopes are classified with respect to the bed slope if the bed slope is less than critical slope it is mild slope if the bed slope is greater than critical slope it is steep slope if bed slope is equal to critical slope it is critical slope channel if the bed slope is equal to zero it is horizontal channel if the bed slope is negative it is called as adverse channel so this is how we classified the channel bed slopes as mild steep critical horizontal and adverse slopes now in today's lecture we focus on the classification of water surface slopes previous one is channel bed slopes now what we are talking about is the water surface slopes how to classify the water surface slopes water surface slopes are broadly classified under two headings one is called as backwater curve backwater curve backwater curve the other one is drawdown curve once again drawdown curve once one is backwater curve the other one is drawdown curve if the water surface is rising please remember if the water surface is rising in the direction of flow we call it as backwater curve if the water surface is falling in the direction of flow we call it as a drawdown curve if the water surface is rising the slope of the water surface is positive so for backwater curve dy by dx is positive if the water surface is falling then dy by dx is negative so remember that the water surface profiles can be classified broadly under two headings one is a backwater profile the other one is a drawdown profile backwater profile means water surface is rising whereas drawdown profile is water surface is falling backwater curve means water surface is rising means dy by dx is positive drawdown curve means water surface is falling means dy by dx is negative so with this background let me go into the examples of it also and let us uh, discuss in detail about that then afterwards uh, the water surface profiles are also classified based on the second method what is that method is based on the channel slopes also the water surface profiles can be classified that also we will see in this lecture right overall this lecture deals with water surface profiles classification what is broad classification what is the deep classification these are the two all this lecture is related to one what is how you classify the water surface profiles in an open channel when the flow is gradually varied flow when the flow is uniform there is nothing like classification because when the flow is uniform the depth of flow is same everywhere everywhere the depth of flow is constant it is called normal depth but in the gradually varied flow the depth of flow varies uh, slowly there is a small variations in depth of flow or a long length of channel when such a thing happens uh, how to classify the water surface profiles so what are the various ways to classify the water surface profiles that we will discuss in this lecture right let us go ahead directly to the whiteboard so this lecture is to discuss about the gradual gradually varied flow 
water surface profiles. This is the lecture. The water surface profiles. The water surface profiles. In gradually varied flow can be broadly classified. Can be broadly classified as number one backwater curve, number two drawdown curve. What is BWC? BWC means backwater curve. DDC means draw. Down curve. So, this is what we are interested. Now, let us take what is BWC. If the water surface is rising in the direction of flow. It is called as backwater curve. That means the slope of water surface that is dy by dx is positive. Right? Example is flow behind. An obstruction such as a fear, a dam, the water surface rises slowly, right? I will show you the figure also. For example, you take this as bed. This is the structure, abstraction, dam. Right? Yes. Or better, you take. Dam is not the correct word. I take a spillway or a weir. Because over the dam we don't allow to flow. So a weir. So now how the water surface is, what the backwater curve means, what happens, this is how the water rises. This is how the water surface. So here the depth if you see it is y1. And here the depth you see it is y2. So now you see the depth of flow is increasing in the direction of flow. This is what we call it as backwater profile. So this y2 minus y1 is called as a flux. The difference between this and this is the obstruction. Obstruction. Next, the second one is what we call it as is drawdown curve. The second one is what drawdown curve. What I mentioned in the drawdown curve, the water surface is falling in the direction of flow. The water surface is falling in the direction of flow. Then we call this as a thing. If the water surface is falling, then the slope of the water surface face dy by dx is negative. Right? 
and then such a case we call it as a draw then example for it is flow over a free fall break in channel bed break in channel bed this is also another example i will show you also how it is suppose this is the channel and there is a small break here and again channel bed like this then what happens the water surface profile basically if you see it this well what happens this is how it falls so that means if i see here it is y1 here it is y2 so it is a falling curve and if this is a falling curve this is called as dw's ddc so finally for this dy by dx is negative so this you should remember then for example if you ask actually if dy by dx is equal to positive we mention pwc pwc means immediately you can draw such a figure and show the water surface like this so that means here by one here by two so increasing mm. then if dy by dx is a negative it is a drawdown curve so what is happening this is how the drawdown curve so here y1 here by him it is falling then if dy by dx if dy by dx is equal to 0 then it is basically uniform flow that the flow is constant depth of flow is constant so this is backwater curve drawdown curve bwc dc and this is uniform so this depth here is called as normal depth here so this is what basically finally the water surface profiles classification broad classification is Broad classification is dy by dx positive rising water surface bwc dy by dx negative falling water surface water surface falling Draw down curve. dy by dx is equal to 0 uniform flow. Depth is called, depth is constant and is called normal depth. This is GBF. This is uniform flow. So that is uh, the most important thing. So now we discuss on uh, the water surface profiles. Uh, right? Previously, we discussed water surface profiles uh, based on uh, whether it is a rising curve or a falling curve. The rising curve is called as a 
backward curve and the falling curve is called as a drawdown curve. Now we will again further classify the water surface uh, basically profiles. The further classification of water surface profiles uh, is based on the channel bed slopes. That we will take it now. Surface profiles, the water surface profiles. Just now we classified them as backwater curve and drawdown curve. This is based on dy by dx is positive, dy by dx is negative. This is based on rising curve and this is falling curve. Now again, the water surface profiles are further classified. The water surface profiles are further classified based on channel bed slope. How we classified already based on channel bed slope, we classified yesterday based on channel uh, bed slope, it is mild, it is steep and we call it as critical, right? We call it as horizontal, we call it as uh, adverse. These are the channel bottom slopes, uh, we classified like this, the channel bottom slopes. And based on the channel bottom slopes, we can classify in each of the channels, whether it is mild sloped channel, steep sloped channel, critical sloped channel, horizontal channel, adverse channel. In these channels, the water surface profiles can be classified. The water surface profiles can be classified. based on the depth of flow y with respect to normal depth and critical depth. I will explain one for, for you. For example, let me take first mild slope channel. The water surface profiles in the mild slope channel are classified as M curves. M curves means what? These are all nothing but the water surface profiles. Water surface profiles in which channel? In mild slope channel. The water surface profiles in mild slope channel are called M curves. From here you talk. Water surface profiles in mild slope channel are classified as M curves. Now we know what is the condition for mild slope channel. The condition for mild slope channel is S0 should be less than SC. Then immediately I told Yn should be greater than Yc. Right? The line, the line connecting normal depth is called normal depth line. The line connecting critical depth is called critical depth line. Suppose if I take a mild slope channel, for example, this is it. We assume it is a mild slope channel. For mild channel, how the condition is uh, Yn is greater than Yc. So that means if I write uh, basically the profiles, uh, how they look like if I write it, uh, how it will be Yn is greater than Yc. That means which is below 
the critical depth line is below and the normal depth line is above because yn is greater than yc this is the condition for mild slope channel so this depth what we call it as yc and what we call this depth as yn right so now in this channel if the water flows right the water can flow here water can flow here water can flow here the possibility is water can flow above normal depth line and cdl water can flow between ndl and cdl or water can be below cdl so the water surface profile has to be lie has to lie in any of these three regions if suppose the water surface lies in the first region first region means what is the condition the depth of flow for example this is the depth of flow so if this if i take this as the depth of flow y is greater than yn is greater than yc just see that means the water surface profile is in the first region then we call it as m1 profile similarly if the water surface profile is in the second region what is that second region yn is greater than y is that means y is in between this is y y is this is the first region this is second y is in between normal depth line and cdl then we call it as m2 profile if the depth of flow is in the third region c then we call it as m3 profile so depending on the region the water surface profile can be classified as m1 this is m1 region profile here is m2 profile here is m3 profile all these three profiles are in which channel mild slope channel so the mild slope channel has mild slope channel has three water surface profiles three water surface profiles what are the water surface profiles it may be in region 1 what is region 1 the depth of flow is greater than all normal depth and critical depth this is first one this is called as m1 and region 2 yn is greater than y is greater than yc that means y is in between yn and yc that is m2 and 3 is region 3 is y n is greater than y c is greater than y both are greater than y it is m3 so if i draw again so normally to classify this what we will do you draw the channel first you name the channel bottom actually it is mild slope that is the first thing decision you need to take once this decision you need to now know how to draw the what is the condition for it condition is yn is greater than yc so normal depth should be above critical depth so critical depth should be lower and normal depth should be higher this is the next decision you should take it once the stations are taken classify them this is first region this is second region this is third region actually the line connecting normal depth is normal depth line the line connecting the critical depth is called as the critical depth line that which we should know it we should know it then actually we should plan for uh, how to really know the things so if the water surface is in this region 
we call it as M1 profile. If it is in this region, M2 profile. If you call it as M3 in this region. So the water surface profile is above NDL and CDL M1. If it is between NDL and CDL M2. If it is CDL and channel bed, it is M3. So these are the three profiles actually in this region. So that we should remember. Next I will tell you again. So similarly, if I take uh, the steep slope channel, in the case of steep slope channel, that is what we call it as S. All the profiles are named after S. So in the steep slope channel, if I draw a channel again, this is a steep slope channel. When I call a, a channel as steep so sloped channel, the condition is there already. S0 should be greater than SC. Then we call that particular channel as a steep slope channel. Not only that actually, YC is greater than or YN is less than YC. This is the second condition. So if this condition is satisfied, then if YN is greater than YC, then immediately I say it is a mild slope channel. If YN is less than YC, immediately we say it is a steep slope channel. In steep slope channel, again, if I take it, naturally, there will be three regions like previously in mild slope channel. What are the three regions? So in this, uh, YN should be less than YC. That means this should be YN. So, this is the normal depth line and this is the YC. Why? Because the normal depth line should be below critical depth line. That's what the definition itself speaks about. Now, here also there are three regions. One, two, three. That means above CDL and NDL is one region. Between CDL and NDL is second region. Between NDL and bottom slope is the third region. So, if the water surface profile is here, then we call it as S1. If the water surface profile is in this region, we call it as S2 curve. If the water surface profile is in this region, we call it as S3 region. So, for calling S1, S2, S3, first thing is you need to confirm whether the channel bottom slope is what type of slope. Whether the channel, if the channel bottom is a steep slope, how can you know whether the bottom channel slope is a steep slope? Then you should see what is the relation between S1 not and SC. If S not is greater than SC, you can immediately say the channel bottom slope is a steep slope slope. Not only that, if YN is less than YC, calculate YN, calculate YC and how to calculate YC you can ask me. Generally, you will be given rectangular channels and in the rectangular channels, it is YC is equal to small q square by G whole to the power of 1 by 3. Using that equation, we calculate and already the depth of normal depth you can calculate assuming the flow is uniform and both the depths we compare. If YN is less than YC, immediately I conclude it is a steep slope channel. Then afterwards, where the profile lies, where the water surface lies. If the water surface lies above NDL and CDL, that means here basically Y is greater than YC is greater than YN. It is called as S1 curve. And if suppose the YC is greater than Y is greater than YN, this is second region, we call it as S2 curve. And naturally, if it is both or basically it is less than both, then we call it as S3 curve. So the curves are S1 curve, S2 curve, S3 curves. So the water surface profiles in steep slope channel are S1 curve, S2 curve, S3 curve. These are the three curves actually, depending on the depth of flow. So this is the second thing. Similarly, if I take a critical slope channel, third one, So critical slope channel, the profiles are called as C curves. So now if I take this as the channel bottom. So this is critical slope channel. When we call a particular channel slope as critical slope, when S0 is equal to SC, that means YN is equal to YC. That means the same line, this will be normal depth line. 
and this is also equal to CDL because this is equal to Yn is equal to Yc. So when Yn is equal to 1c, naturally this is above both is number 1, below both is what number 3, but 2 is missing. The region 2 is missing because what is region 2? Region 2 is the, the, the distance between the normal depth and the critical depth. The portion between normal depth and critical depth is called as zone 2. That is what we call it as region 2. You call it as zone 2, region 2, whatever you call. That will be missing in critical slope channel. You will be having only 1 and 3. So that's why if this is the region, the profile is C1 and this is the region, the C region is profile is C3. What is C1 actually region? Y is greater than Yn is equal to Yc. And what is this region? Y is less than Yn is equal to Yc. Y greater than that? Y greater than that. The between, because both are coinciding, then naturally the second region or second zone missing. Here in this second zone will not be there. Right? Because Yn is equal to Yc. This is critical slope channel. Then fourth one is what? Horizontal channel. So in the horizontal channel actually, what will be the region actually? What we mentioned, suppose if I take it, this is a horizontal channel. Horizontal slope channel. It should be horizontal, gentlemen. I have written it. Right? Now, what is the case I told horizontal basically? S0 is equal to 0. Then what I told actually? Yn is equal to infinity. If Yn is infinity, what is the zone above Y1? Yn? Above normal depth, what is the zone? Above infinity, what can I tell? So that is why here if I take it, because Yn is at infinity, so above Yn zone will be, above Yn zone is not there. That means zone 1 is not there. So here naturally, this will be equal to Yc. That is CDL. But Yn, where should I draw? Yn is at infinity. So above infinity, so zone. So this is zone 2. This is zone 3. Right? So that means uh, above CDL, below CDL. So Y is greater than Yc and Y is less than Yc. So this is what we call it as H2 curve. This is H3 curve. This is horizontal. If I go for next one is uh, the adverse channel. In the adverse channel, if I take it, uh, so that means this is how it will be. S0 is less than 0, negative. So then in that case, uh, Yn, I, what I mentioned actually, imaginary. Imaginary thing, what can I do? So this is only CDL. So again, here also, 2, 3, as Yn is imaginary. So zone 1 will not be there. So this you should remember. So this is A2, this is A3 curves. So now if I to do it, first let us come mild slope channel. Right, mild slope. Let me talk one after the other. Right, first if I take mild slope channel, what are the curves? M1, M2, M3. These are the curves. What is the condition for M1, zone 1, zone 2, 
zone 3. What is the condition for zone 1? Y is greater than Yn is greater than Yc. Second is what Y is between Yn and Yc. Third is what Y is less than. This is the next. Right? Then, kindly remember all ones and threes are backwater curves. All suffix 1 and 3 are backwater curves. All suffix 2 are drawdown curves. Kindly remember. Right? Now, next. Here, if you see it, the depth of flow is greater than critical depth. As long as the depth of flow is greater than critical depth, the flow is subcritical. Here also the depth of flow is greater than critical depth. So this also subcritical. And here if you see the depth of flow is less than critical flow. So this is supercritical flow. So what is the nature of flow if they ask? So M1 profile is a backward. All any profile you take suffix 1 and 3 or backwater curves, suffix 2 or drawdown curves. Then let me go into the second. It is a steep slope. In the steep slope also, what are the curves that are available? S1, S2, S3. This is zone 1, zone 2, zone 3. Right? In the zone 1, what which should be higher? Critical depth should be higher. Y is greater than Yc is greater than Yn. Then Y is in between Yc. Basically, Y is greater than. Sorry. One second. One second. Yc. Yc is greater than. Y is greater than Yn. And next third one is. Yc is greater than Yn is greater than Y. So Y should be higher, Y should be in middle, Y should be below. Depending on that, we should write it. And here always critical depth should be more than, critical depth should be more than normal depth. That is first thing. When critical depth is more than normal depth, then only it is called steep slope. So all suffix 1 I already told backwater curve backwater curve whereas suffix 2 is i mentioned it as drawdown curve now here you see the depth of flow is more than critical depth then in that case subcritical the depth of flow is less than critical depth supercritical now again you see the depth of flow is great is less than critical depth super only one condition depth of flow greater than critical depth subcritical depth of flow less than critical depth supercritical then what is the third one critical slope in critical one i what i told the middle one will be missing because here this is a s0 less than sc yn greater than yc here is what S0 greater than SC, YN less than YC. Here is S0 is equal to SC, YN is equal to YC. So then naturally middle one is missing, C1, C3, zone 1, zone 3, zone 2, no, C2, no. y greater than yn is equal to yc y less than yn is equal to yc so c1 is always backwater curve c3 is always drawn y is greater than yc that is subcritical y is less than yc supercritical Right. Next, after the critical slope, then horizontal. 
S0 is equal to 0. This Yn is equal to infinity. Then what are the things here we have? First, C1, no. Zone 1, no. Because infinity, then C2, C3. This is zone 2, zone 3. What is the condition actually? Y can be between basically yn and y is yn is greater than y greater than yc yn greater than yc greater than y these are the two so all suffix 2 are drawdown curves suffix 3 are backwater curves y is greater than yc subcritical yc is greater than y that means uh, y is below so this is super critical why because if if y is greater than yc basically subcritical y is less than yc super critical this is the condition anywhere last one is what adverse that is S V zero less than zero. Y n is immersed. So A one no John one no A two A three John two John three. So then again Y n greater than Y greater than Y C yn greater than yc greater than y ddc pwc sub critical super critical so this completes the actually the water surface profiles classification so i will close this topic in two minutes so what is the final conclusion of the entire topic actually here if you see it is so water surface profiles are broadly classified under two headings one is a backwater curve the other one is a drawdown curve what are the characteristics of a backwater curve a backwater curve is always uh, dy by dx is positive it is a rising curve what is a drawdown curve drawdown curve means the water surface profile is falling in the direction of flow dy by dx is negative that is over then afterwards what is the further classification based on the channel bed slopes which we classified already the channels as mild slope channel steep slope channel critical slope channel horizontal channel adverse channel the same thing actually we can reflect it this also that is how we have taken when i have taken it in that direction so now in the mild slope channel that naturally the line joining normal depth is called as normal depth line and line joining critical depth is called critical depth line so if i know this actually so what are the zones prevailing there will be three zones above normal depth line cdl between normal depth cdl below normal depth cdl that is what we have done it so for mild slope there will be three zones m1 m3 m m2 m3 curves and for steep slope again s1 s2 s3 curves for critical slope channel only c1 c3 curves because both merge the zone 2 is merging and again coming to the uh, horizontal slope zone 1 is missing zone 2 zone 3 that is h2 h3 and adverse slope also a2 a3 so here i stop in this lecture now my next job is uh, which is the last topic of the gradually varied flow is uh, how to calculate this length of the backwater curve or drawdown curve or length of the water surface profile the length of the water surface profile how to estimate it that means what is the reason for that also i will talk in that with that we will close it thank you so much for your patience like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates